You mentioned Goldman Sachs uh, a little earlier here, um, and obviously, it's this has actually become a really big, uh, big, big deal here. Um, and, and I got to say, man, um, Ada, you're you're one of the the most you know. Just, just one of the best reporters of like going through and, and looking and connecting all the dots of where and actually following the money. That's something you, you're, I mean, you've been on the show, you know, 12 times or something like that. And we're always talking about how, you know, you're digging into these documents and actually finding out where the money's coming from, who's spending all this money. Um, now there is some pressure on uh, Hillary Clinton to release her Goldman Sachs transcripts, but this actually uh, began with, uh, with you uh, with her uh, actually at a campaign event. So just t tell us about your experience um, with, with Hillary Clinton trying to get, uh, asking her about her transcripts to these giant Wall Street firms. Oh, well, Matt, you know, I, I've spent uh, the, the last year sending um, press inquiries to the Hillary Clinton campaign. They haven't responded to any of them. I've sent, you know, over a dozen. So like a lot of reporters, um, I went to a, a Hillary Clinton campaign event, and at the end, you know, she goes over to the rope line, she takes selfies and, and chit chats with her supporters. And like a lot of reporters, I use that as my only opportunity to talk to her. So in January, when she was in Manchester, New Hampshire, I walked up to the rope line, I said hello, um, and then I asked her if she would uh, release the transcript of her paid speeches to Goldman Sachs. In 2013, she made three speeches to Goldman Sachs, uh, made over uh, $600,000 from those speeches. And, you know, I asked for her to disclose uh, what she said to those banks. I mean, what, what was so important um, for, her to, for her to make so much money and to speak directly to that one investment bank three times? And she just laughed and turned her head. And um, what's interesting is that, you know, uh, I didn't receive a lot of media attention initially, but uh, I went on Democracy Now! Um, a few days later and, and talked about that. And um, Amy Goodman played my clip a couple times. And apparently, um, several people in New Hampshire saw that and called into MSNBC and the, their local TV stations asking about that. And within uh, a week later of that happening, um, at the uh, MSNBC debate, uh, uh, the, one of the people who actually saw my clip on Democracy Now! called into the network. That question was then asked directly to Hillary Clinton again. Um, and uh, this time, when it was Chuck Todd asking her, and she was on, you know, a nationally televised event, she couldn't just laugh and turn away. She actually responded and said she would look into it. And uh, since then, we've had a lot of stories. The Wall Street Journal, the Politico, has talked to a number of people who are at that um, uh, that paid speech, or, or all three of those paid speeches. And it's interesting, you know. Apparently, uh, Hillary Clinton sounded more like a managing director at Goldman Sachs. She kind of attacked um, anti-bank populism. She was very, um, she, she spoke very favorably about the bank. And we do know that she has a transcript of all these speeches, and it's completely in her power whether or not she wants to release them, but it doesn't look like she will. She has a transcript because part of the contract was that there would be someone there to transcribe it, correct? So that there's, it's not, so every, that, that is part of her, her writers as a speaker is that she gets a, 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 someone there to actually write down what she says, correct? That is actually something that is part of, you know, mm -hmm. uh, speakers and, and, and people who do these type of things have contracts and that is in her actual, actual writers. Yeah, she's in, she has in her speaking contract a provision that says that whoever hires her has to pay an additional thousand dollars or so for someone to do the transcription and then that she will own the transcription. Wow. So uh, it's pretty clear she has it. So it's, it's completely, um, you know, it's the ball is in her court, but you know, she doesn't want the world to know that she was paid, you know, over $600,000 and then went to this bank that uh, helped pump up the financial, uh, the housing bubble and then profited from the collapse uh, she doesn't want uh, people to know that she was being paid so much from this bank and then paid to say very nice things uh, to those bankers. I guess before I let you go, um, I just just talk a little bit because you, you're, you know, you you wrote a whole book about the corruption of the right and and and, and how horrible money is in politics and how much it actually really does uh, just just make it rotten to its very core. I, I just talk a little bit about how. You know, if you're someone on the left who really does want actual change, 
how much money in politics and how much the sort of revolving door and just 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 the the having these corrupting influences uh, be in the room and 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 funding everything. Just just talk a little bit about about your opinion on how how bad it actually is here in 2016. Look, you know, I wrote a whole book on how the conservative movement rebuilt itself so quickly after being kind of destroyed in every sense of the word back in 2008, whether it was their credibility or just in terms of how many legislative and uh, other seats Republicans held after after that year. Um, but within two years, they completely re rebounded thanks to the role of money in politics. Um, but we're seeing that this again, you know, where whether it's um, lobbyists who are going on television and, you know, they're identified as quote unquote democratic strategists or various institutions that are funded with corporate money that are moving very swiftly to limit the ability of a progressive candidate, in this case, Bernie Sanders, to talk about the big issues that I think most progressive um, activists and, and people and, and, and economists believe in, you know, whether it's a higher minimum wage, access to a union, um, affordable health care, dealing with climate change, dealing with the big banks and other large corporations and, and their control over the economy. Um, you kind of see all 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 guns are, are blazing right now, uh, uh, firing at, at, at Bernie Sanders to, to um, prevent his movement in the Democratic primary. And it's just fascinating to watch whether, you know, it's in the media or, or in the Democratic Party kind of machinery. Um, and again, this isn't all just like, you know, too many times when we talk about campaign finance, it's boiled down to how much money a candidate collects or how much money is given to a super PAC. That's only one part of it. I mean, what really matters is that in Democratic politics, if you, or again, also in Republican politics, if you, um, if you suck up to big business, if you uh, support the status quo, if you support incumbent industries, you have a job path, whether it's at a lobbying firm, a PR firm, or, or what have you, um, uh, uh, kind of going through the motions and, and supporting certain types of status quo policies gets you ahead politically and professionally. Um, so we're seeing a lot of these folks who occupy uh, the institutions uh, that, that make up uh, uh, our, our political and media environment uh, kind of playing their role in subverting any potential for change.